Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. I'm pumped for our guest today, Andy Grammer in the what house. Up? Good to see you, man. How, How are you? How are you doing? Dude, good to be here. I'm, I'm excited for this. Um, you are... You're a big inspiration, I think, for so many people because you didn't make it big as like this pop singer star early on. No. Right? You were yeah. busking on Third Street is what I read. Totally. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. And it was a crazy way, yeah. How long were you busking for? About four years of, of that being like my main source four of Four years yeah. on Third Street. Mm-hmm. That you know, is it's crazy, It's funny man. to hear all these, <clears throat> all the stories behind a lot of like big companies are, are, are like, you know, somebody selling shoes out of the back of their van or... <laughs> <laughs> or like some some small level of of just going for it, and that was that's definitely what I did for about four years. Four years, and you went every single day, or was it just like on the yeah, weekends? Yeah, like or? it was usually more on the weekends, and then you know I would go uh, a lot during the week as well, just to sing. Like you just have to be doing so much of what of what you love. When it comes to like art, you have to really um, there the the curve of when you get paid is is. Is like non-existent, 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 <laughs> non-existent, and then like, oh, there you go. Now we get it. Unless wow. somebody like gets, unless you're making someone feel something incredible. Yeah. You know, which is really hard. I always say that in other industries, I don't know if it's the same. Like, if you, uh, if there's like nine to five jobs, I feel like you can get hired based on the idea that they'll train you mm-hmm. and you'll learn how to do it. Yes. And stuff like, you know, any any art form is like, well. That like no one's that, training you. No one's training you, and <clears throat> if if I think your song is like kind of good, then I'm not gonna get it. I, I have to actually go like, oh my god, <laughs> right, this right, is amazing. I have to like cry or I have be to like cry super or something. You know, the hair has to stand up yes. on my arms, and so that was like pr- like a great lesson to learn over a four year period on the street was how to how to be able to read people as well. Mm. Like, all right, I'm playing this song and you don't care, <laughs> and I'm playing I, some cover song. Yeah, and- I'm playing a cover song. You don't care. Uh, what a, it's probably me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. At some point, you got to go like, all right, something here should shift, you know. I mean, that's probably the greatest training you could have had is busking. It was really, it was just unbelievable training, man, to, to really go every, to go so many days in a row for four years and get, I got so good at playing the covers and stuff and, and my own songs that I would spend most of my time just listening to what people would say as they walked mm. by. So I'd be playing my- Really? Yeah. I still have like that trained. My manager knows that if he comes to a sound check or something, he keeps his- Don't say- Yeah. <laughs> and he tells everybody too. He's like, yeah, Andy, Andy. Listen. He can Andy hear listening. you. I know you, you think he's singing, but like he's listening. Wow. That's impressive. So a impressive. lot of it was coming from a place of, um, how, how do I, be, how, how am I of service to you right now? How am I mm. actually going to affect you? You know, those are my favorite songs when you hear and it like shifts you or makes you feel better right. or feel worse in like a cool way or, you know, something. And so a lot of the shift on the street was how do I switch the service? Because when you're bad in the beginning, everybody's ears are doing you a service. We've all felt that. Yeah. We've all like gone to our friend's uh, little bar gig and been like, <laughs> I'm here for you, bro. Right. That's it. <laughs> But I'd rather like, not be here. I'm here for you. Your stuff is like getting there, but I'm giving you right now, right? <laughs> wow. And so over four years, uh, if you're listening to the cues and you put in all your work all the time into songwriting and trying to figure out how do I switch that? How do I switch it to where now I'm doing you a service? Uh, where people by, are like 20 yards away and they hear something and then they walk yeah, over to you. You know, and that, that's like across all levels of like, uh, voice is my voice just not good enough? Do I need to sing so much? Do I need to get a vocal coach? Do I need like what do I got to do so that when you walk by, you're like pleasantly like befuddled at how how you're feeling, and you're like just drawn to like grabbing yeah. your wallet and just giving you cash. Yes, to actually <laughs> like- to actually get someone who's walking who didn't expect to mm-hmm. to get like attacked by music today and was just going to buy some jeans, <laughs> um, or is on like vacation and they're just walking past. It's like such a shift to get them to go like. I want that. That's awesome. That's a pretty great skill. If you yeah. can get someone to stop and grab their wallet and give you cash. Yeah. yeah. Just in like 30 seconds. And I think that probably across most businesses, that's that's what you're trying to do mm. of any sort. Is like, yeah. how do we get someone to feel like we're doing them a service that they need? Mm. Like, and actually doing it for them. Yeah. In a way that's like a better than they were expecting. Not just pushing something that they think they should have, but yeah. giving them something really But valuable. giving them something like they're feeling. And I think a lot of that comes from your, your intent as well. Absolutely. Like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to uh, manipulate you as you walk by. I'm like, trying here. to move you. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm on earth to like write songs that like make wow, people man. feel something. So uh, that's like a worthy why. Right. So then it's just like every day go and try and figure it out. So like my, my journey was, 
I would go out and play for eight hours and no one would stop. Oh, my gosh. And then I would, like, play uh, Maroon 5 Sunday morning. <laughs> and then, like, they'd kind of stop. Like, oh. For a minute. So then, like, I'd, 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 pl- I'd be out there for eight hours. And I and say my cycle was, like, 30 minutes or 40 minutes of, like, the same songs. I noticed that, like, everybody stops when I play Maroon 5 Sunday morning. And then they all quickly leave again. <laughs> Wow. Once, I, once I play my next original stuff, so then it was like, all right, I got to figure out how to, how to like write. Uh, let's let's go after this. And so then I wrote my first album was me just trying to write that song over and over and wow. over and over again. Yeah. Holy cow, Pretty man! Pretty nutty, yeah. How did you? I mean, survive. Were you making enough money that first year, or were you, did you have another side job here? No, that was how. That was like how I did it. I was able to like hundred bucks a day, hundred bucks thing. a day type stuff. Wow. Yeah. It was like pity money. A lot of it, some of it was pity money. Um, <laughs> some of it was like, <clears throat> I can be pretty like aggressive and shameless. Like if a little, I, I remember at that point, it was all just like at all costs, entertain you. Mm. Even if my music isn't. Like take my, your shirt off. And, yeah, like, yeah, do yeah. A oh, little, there's a little girl walking birthday, by like, you want like me to write her a song right now? What's <laughs> up? What's your name? Sophia? Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> just like, that's like the lowest form of, of course. that's the lowest form of, uh, <clears throat> of service. Yeah. Still is though. Now at least at least you give a shit about me. Yeah. Like you still like, oh, okay, cool. You're gonna you're gonna like personalize something for me. Right. And I remember growing up, like I always loved things that were impressive mm. or entertaining. So I like got into magic, and I got into uh, you know I tried to learn how to do like a backflip. Like these are like the the smallest forms of like yeah you're gonna be impressed and you and you're gonna get something from me. <clears throat> right. And then as I got older. <clears throat> The more that I fell in love with, like, ooh, but, like, where the real fun comes in is my favorite form is, like, songwriting because I can get in. If I do it right, like, I can get in there and, like, shift some things around you or make you think about something that you mm. might not – that you're probably, like, going through. Um, I, like, I like to say that it's, like, uh, the analogy that I overuse, and anybody that's heard me in an interview has heard me say this many times, but it's, like, Newton wrote out what gravity was. And everybody at the time was, like, yeah. All the time, actually. <laughs> like every second of my day, I deal right. with gravity. And you wrote it and you said it correctly. So now my whole experience in life is vastly <clears throat> more interesting mm-hmm. because of the way that you like put that together, you know? Mm. And so that's like my, that's my favorite. That's what makes, that's what gets me psyched what's, about what's, is, is like doing that. What's the greatest uh, line you've ever written? Uh, you've ever put together that's resonated with people in such a way that they feel that way also about their life? Um... Man, there's so many different ways to do it. There's like you can you can be inspirational, which is really cool. So mm-hmm. my first single was called "Keep Your Head Up," and I got a lot of incredible uh, feedback and stories. And you know, I had a girl come up to me in Swingers in L.A., and she said that I saved her life. Wow! Because she was on a bridge and she was like driving pretty fast, and she was done, like she'd given up, and she was ready to just like go off the bridge. She said her hands were like shaking on the wheel, and she was ready to do it. And then she said to keep your head up, came on the radio and she's like, ah, and she stayed on. Wow. And she came up to me with like a super serious look on her face and was like, I just need to tell you that like you saved my life. I'm still going through shit, but like, I appreciate you. Wow. <laughs> like, that's oh my a, God. That's amazing. That's unbelievable. You know, and, and, and really believing that if you go after, you know, what you, what your purpose is here, mm. that it can really affect other people in an incredible that way. That is powerful, man. Yeah. I'm sure there's many stories like that for you, too. And I think it's interesting, you know, keep your head up may seem like a simple phrase or yeah. whatever, but yeah. I think it's not exactly what you say, but how you say it and the intention behind it and the way you package it. And so there's yeah. a way in which you packaged it, Yeah, the phrase, with the music, the song, the words, your energy, your passion. Totally. And I think a lot of that is like a, there's like a relentlessness Mm-hmm. to it yeah to like some like i especially as someone that tries to loves to loves to write songs like that mm-hmm. the it's such a razor sharp edge of just being the worst cheesy song you've ever heard like keep right. your head up even just the title you're like mm, right i don't know about that one <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> not sure that one's gonna be like i don't know um and what was funny is that was i think people could feel the reason that that one did well i just lost my mom mm-hmm. she passed away about eight years ago mm-hmm. and I was, that song came from being on the street without getting any, any real sick, like acknowledgement, success. No one's, no one's seeing you Mm -hmm. for what you think you are. Um, that period of my life, I remember just like rehearsing and playing all the time. And I actually had someone come and not, I was like rehearsing in my Santa Monica apartment and there was a knock on the door and I went out and there was a little sticky note that said, literally it said, 
give up the dream. Your no, vo- your way. voice is terrible. And I remember, and there was nobody even there. <laughs> oh my god! There wasn't even someone I could be like, oh well, you're just you just suck. Like you're just the worst person ever. It was just like the world being like, uh, give up, like stop. And wow. so I was out on the street doing my thing, and there was a whole day that went by where I didn't get any any dollars. And I was like, wow, man, this is really intense. And I, I had my little cart. And zero I, dollars. The zero whole dollars day. the whole day. I don't know if it was like overcast or something or no one was coming. But it's such a funny thing. Uh, such like a sweet defiance uh, to, to follow your purpose even when you're, you're – you, the only reason you're allowed to be there is because it's freedom of speech, right? <laughs> so you're and there. you have a permit. You, yeah, you have a you permit. Have a, I paid. You pay like – Like $35 for the year to is be able to it? just have freedom of speech with my guitar <laughs> – and I'm singing to the to no one. Wow. And people that are there are just not interested and they're walking by. And um, I like packed all my stuff up. Just like, man, amazing. Wow. Okay. And I'm, I'm leaving and then I looked up at the sky and I was like, uh, your move, whatever's up there. I literally will never leave. So if you want me to be here in 50 years, just like singing because this is the only opportunity that I have and I'm going hard at it. Then I'll be here. Like it's your your call, Just like. And I do believe there is something about like once you state your intentions and once you put it out there into the universe of like where you're going, then some things go like. It's like the the the, the secretary at the desk of the universe is like ah no he's he's serious we we can give it to him now <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> like he, he's not gonna leave like right. we should probably give it to this guy he's just gonna be annoying <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Andy's gonna be annoying until something and so I you know after that I went home and then I wrote that song. Wow, man. And I, oh, but I do believe, you know, my mom had passed away. I had, I had zero dollars. I was living in a pretty crappy apartment. And, uh, and so out of that, if you hear that guy sing, keep your head up, then you're like, oh, I'll, I'll listen to what you have to say. Mm. Go ahead. What do you got? It wasn't like everything in your life was good. Yeah. Life. It wasn't like a, some sort of trust fund baby that was like, everybody, it's cool. But yeah. Yeah. You, there's, there's pain is, is something that grounds uh, a lot of, a lot of the positive stuff. Of course. You, need, you need them both to make it feel real. Wow. Yeah. Dude, I'm so fascinated by this. When was there a moment where you were like busking where mm-hmm. you felt like, wow, there's actually this like theme of people constantly showing up. Was it like two years in, three years in where you're like, wow, I'm getting like 50 people around here. Like every time I play a song and like people are actually coming up to me and being like, thank you. You just changed my day. And yeah, like you got to be bigger. It's than funny this. because and, I, I do love to talk about this because I would, I would, I don't know if I heard enough of this when I was coming up. So like in any business or art form, I think we're so quick. Oh, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, the reason we struggle with insecurity is because we compare our behind the scenes with everybody else's highlight reels. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So like you go through your life and you're like, man, I'm, I'm on year three out here. And did Prince do this? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like, did, was Prince on the street? I don't, right. I've, all I've seen of Prince is on the cover of Billboard. <laughs> right. And I feel like maybe he just, like, was born on Billboard. Right. Um, and so I, I like to try and be as open as possible because I think there's probably a lot of people out there that are really good and have something awesome to share with the world and need to know that I, I didn't just go, like, oh, it's working. Mm. I went, my cover of this band that I think I like makes people stop for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then I slowly was like, I'm going to write 10 songs that sound like that one. Wow. And out of those 10, none of them are good, but (laughs) the 10th one is like kind of intriguing. So I'm going to write another 10. Like that one, yeah. Yeah, I like this one. So then you write another 10, and guess what? Number seven of those 10, you're you're getting people to like at least take a look. Or you know, clap, and just over and feet. over yeah. and over and over again. So wow. there's a relentlessness to whatever greatness mm-hmm. that I think is really, really important. How many songs have you written? So, life? you know, that's the, another story that's fun to tell is like uh, the last of my last album, this song, Honey, I'm Good. That was so I'm so blessed to have it went like triple platinum. It's it was amazing, super man. cool. Congrats. But it was that. song 101. Wow. Right. That you've so, written. No, just for that album. Wow. So yeah. we'd ro- I basically wow. wrote 50 wow. songs because I had some success with Keep Your Head Up and uh, the song Fine By Me. And I was like really excited to come back. But also there was the first time I had pressure while I was writing, which is different. Wow. I mean, it's pressure in your own right to like write something good. But then if you know eyeballs are going to be on you and ears are going to be listening when you release something next, 
I wrote 50 songs that were all me and my manager call uh, Me Too. So it's like kind of sound like what was big at the time was like the, Ave- the Avicii song. Yes. So I had one that was like, and me as well with that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or like, uh, you know, whatever. You just like listening to the radio going like, I could do that. Right. Um, and so after getting to the end of those 50, took a lot like a hard look at them and was like, yeah, these are like all me too. Mm. And it's really hard because that was like six months of my life wow. every day, like going after these and like demoing them all the way out and being like, but there's something in here that feels like it's trying to be somebody else and it's just not going to work. So we threw them all away and then wow. I just started again and wrote another 50. Got to the end of that 50 and then had like, I knew that I had something I was really proud of and the songs were great. And, but you know, my manager came in and we listened to the album through and we're like, I don't know if we have, we don't, I don't know if we have the one that if someone's just walking by to get jeans, they're going to stop and pull out, pull out mm-hmm. a $10 bill. And so then just kept going and the next wow. day then the next day after that uh we wrote this song called honey i'm good happened so there's like yeah i think uh there's a lot of positive uh energy positive thinking intention mm-hmm. all that good stuff and then and then that only works if you are insanely relentless yeah. with it yeah yeah gosh man um yeah so yeah. so if i was to say i do think that i'm talented but i think i'm equally as relentless as i am talented yeah that's what like i want it. anyone who listens that feels like um, is qu- that questions. They feel like they, I, we all have this little voice inside. It's like, I've been, I've been, and they talk so quiet. <laughs> I, could, I feel like maybe I could like that. <laughs> right. like, I think maybe. And if you want to get that voice louder, that comes from being relentless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have four years on the streets. Yeah. Get no money. No, no money. Claps, no but claps. what's crazy too is I'm sure like for you as well, what would you consider like you love to what's your favorite part of all this to help to see people like <clears throat> i mean i love it all i love connecting with people like yeah. you and getting to hear these stories and learn myself and then i love to be able to share the wisdom of the world Shit, yeah exactly in various formats whether and it be so i'm sure or... that like if you were in a living room uh before people started to know your name mm-hmm. and you did you, you did this thing with yep. somebody and it wasn't going to go out to your massive following mm-hmm. you'd be like that was great. I still loved it. Yeah, I love you know. Yeah. So I think that there's that as well. There were days on the street, and I always think about that. Like, wow, like if there was a way to measure happiness, I don't feel like I'm any happier right now. Hmm. And that's not a bummer. That's not like, oh man, I got to figure it out. It's like, no, no. Like when I was on the street, and there was like a Japanese soccer team that was coming through, and somehow I did get them, and now there's like a squad of 20 people that are all really excited because mm. I'm, it's just the act of doing the service yeah. when someone really needs what you have and you do the service for them. That feels amazing. And so that was all like, I don't remember those years as terrible. And I think that growth is what makes you happy. Mm. So at, you could feel that you were growing, you know, right. I think it would be hard right now to go back. that would be tough. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like I, I over, yeah. I, you know, like, I grandize it because I remember it being so cool. And then I'll go back out and be like, ah, yeah, that was a different time. I don't know if I need to come, <laughs> right. come back out here right now. Sure. But it was, uh, it was really special at that time. Wow. You know? After you released your first album, did you ever go back out to the Yeah, yeah. Busk? And, and the people that are out there, it's like one of my favorite things ever is a lot of them have heard of me mm-hmm. be- just because, not because I'm like super famous, but if you are someone that's going to go out and play on the street, you probably have heard of a couple of people that is who's made it. Yeah. Who's made it? Yeah. So I'll walk down in in places like um, where where there are street performers, and I'll get recognized, and I'll go walk and sing with the people on the oh, street, that's cool. or um, I'll usually if if I can, I try to drop a massive tip. Right, right. <laughs> Stay <laughs> like, for four years. Here's hundred. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. It might take forever, <laughs> but like enjoy it, follow it, don't stop. You know what I mean? Hundred dollar yeah. tips, pretty nice. Yeah, I got one from Alec Baldwin. Uh, so he set the bar for me. Really? Yeah, totally. His daughter was totally on Third in, Street. On Third Street, yeah. Hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. Was this like year four? This was early. I needed that hundred dollars. <laughs> You're like, like real bad. Oh my gosh! Yeah, totally. So this, cool. This story just inspires me so much. How old were you when you started that and, and finished busking? Um, so probably like around twenty, maybe twenty four ish, twenty twenty three, something like that. It's from like twenty. 
23 to 27, I think, is around wow. where, where it was. Now, at 20, you know, five or whatever, where most of the artists, I feel like, the younger artists, they kind of make it. Yeah. Right? It's like you're either going to make it by 25 or you're not, it seems like, most sure. people, right? Did you feel like, oh, maybe I'm not going to make it? Or was it always the goal to, like, make it and have these top char- uh, top hits on, on Billboard and mm. touring around the world with people? Was that always the vision for you? Or there was you just definitely like, – um, no, it was always about what, what's my purpose. What is it? Why the hell am I here? You know? Mm-hmm. And I remember, so a lot of what I would do, because uh, uh, out on the street would be reading things. Like, um, so I, to get good spots, you have to wait. So it's not just like go out and set up. McDonald's, in front of McDonald's at 2 p.m. on a Sunday is like a really hard uh, spot to get. Because mm-hmm. it's all first come, first serve. Yeah. So a lot of times you got to get there at like 7 a.m. Wow. and just sit there. And wait with for like, the crowd. And let everybody know, like all, like so when the guy with the snake comes by, he goes like, "What do you got?" I'm like, "I'm at two. Nobody's, you know, you're like fending everybody off wow. for the best time." And so just sitting there waiting, I would read, um, try to just read things that were inspiring or figure out. You know, one of the things that I read, there's a really cool address uh, to the Boston Conservatory by this guy Carl Polnack, and and he he gave this whole uh, address about if you were uh, a lawyer. You go to law school and everybody gets it and you you don't see your friends forever because, <laughs> because but for the reason that you know that later on in life there's going to be someone who's going to come in who needs you so bad. They're going to come in and they're like their ability to stay in this country or or something mm. super heavy is going to be mm. based on do you know your craft? Do you know what you're doing? Do you know mm-hmm. how to do this? If you're a doctor, you go to med school and you go super hard because you know someone's going to come in with like a broken arm and it, depending on how hard you worked and how much you know, how much of a service you're able to be, you can like really affect somebody's life. Yeah. And I remember sitting on the street reading this going like, yeah, totally. Like the, a Friday night concert could just be something that you go see or it, it hopefully is something that like shifts your life. Mm-hmm. In like a positive way. Now it doesn't have to be massive, absolutely. But I want I, I want you to feel. I want it to be the pick me up that you needed for the second half of your year. I yeah. want it to be like something that takes you out of the bummer of uh, I don't know something just went wrong. You got in a car accident today and that like really pissed you off, or you're like mm-hmm. you're starting to get down and then you come see, come to this show and you're like ah you know what I feel different. And we've all had that experience with music when a song can like go absolutely. like whoa I feel something, you know. I rem- I mean I remember one of my first concerts was Boys to Men. Yeah, dude. Back in Ohio, Columbus, yes. Ohio, at the Columbus Amphitheater. And I remember I was like 13 or something, and it was like just started to get into like girls or whatever. And I was like, yep. this is amazing. This is the and best like, night of my life. <laughs> it was amazing, right? <laughs> then I remember like in college going to see uh, John Mayer when he kind of was like just hit the scene dude. and blew up. And I was like, this is unbelievable. So good. Like, I was like moved, and I still remember the feeling. Yeah. Right? And it yeah. got you through some hard times yeah. or whatever the moment was happening. So I definitely know that – Art is much more than just going to have a good time. It could really shift everything about your life and how you're feeling in that moment with relationships or career or health yeah. or depression. Yeah, and I think that helps uh, remembering that and what you're going after and why you're writing and why you're putting so much effort in is not like – it's not just to like, oh, man, I want a great single. I don't mm-hmm. even know what that means. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want a single. It's like, well, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I want to like make some art. I'm like, here. This, that, that's what gets me psyched up is, yeah. to, is to try and create those experiences – uh, mm. for people, you know, when you go out on stage and perform now, is there a ritual or routine that you have, or is there an intention that you set every time? Or are you just kind of like, yeah, I mean, I kind of go through that, uh, in like a fun way. It sounds like a little bit of a bummer when you'd use the analogy of the lawyer and the, uh, <laughs> and the doctor, yeah. but I do, I do feel like I have, um, uh, you're coming to me for something. I always try to remember that. And, and it's been, and when you're doing it each night, it, you can, it gets a little, um, gets a little bit too normal mm-hmm. to go out and there's like a th- like thousands of people out there and and same you know, you just, songs, same and... songs, stuff like that. But you have to remember, uh, it's really good to do like meet and greets and see the fans and have them, ha- you know, see hear them their be affected, stories. Like right? I flew in from Australia because I knew that you were gonna be here tonight and we planned our whole vacation around this. So you're like, oh man, I really, I better remember. I really want to deliver. Mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest thing is that we yeah. all you know, have different ways we affect each other. I really want to deliver for the people that come. What do you want people to feel when you're done with a, after a concert? I I really want them to feel like the best concerts that I've been to or any great art, any great writing, 
when I leave. Like I just went. I'm a huge Magic fan. It's so dorky. It's yeah. awesome. Um, I love Magic. I wish I could do it. Dude, it's my favorite. <laughs> so I just went and saw uh, Penn and Teller oh, in Vegas. Yeah, was it great? It was so well done. That's cool. Like there's something when art is done great. Oh, any I don't care what it is. It's a great movie. It's a great theater show. Um, you know, it's really funny. I didn't care about dancing at all, but when I did that show, Dancing with the Stars, there were a couple dances that I watched that were like, oh, yeah, that, that hit me. Mm-hmm. That made me feel something. That's for the right. first time. Like, I haven't really paid attention to dance before. Like, it's amazing. Right. And uh, whatever that whatever that feeling is that uh, you feel like everybody went through it together and it was so correct in some way, like, it, it's like it makes you, there's a unity to it. Mm-hmm. That's what I hope. I hope when people leave, they are reminded that we live uh, that this world can be like magical. I 100% you know what I mean? agree. I just feel 100% like percent agree. You know, you talk about like uh, all this, uh, a lot of positive stuff. Like I, I feel like we live in a magical place. It's bonkers. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time me and my manager like wrote down what we wanted. Like that, that there's a lot of power in in that. And we we actually just sat down like, well, okay, so if everything went perfect, like what would you want? Like, all right, I want, uh, I want like a tour bus for my next tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I want I'm not in a van anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, and you have to almost like say it like that. Like, th- th- <laughs> don't judge me while I while I dream. You know, uh-huh. I want a tour bus. I want some singles that go number one. I want a platinum. I want a couple platinum singles. I want these things, and you write them out, and then you look at them, and I remember it all happened. Wow. And then we came back and saw it, and I was like, yo. the like Harry Potter's not that off, not that far off. Like this is crazy. <laughs> like this world, if you if you're willing to to uh, mm-hmm. be passionate and go after what you love, like things are amazing here. Mm-hmm. You know, and spend ten years doing it. And yeah, you know? yeah, and and really just put in the time. <laughs> exactly, it's uh, it's unbelievable. And and um, did you always want to do music when you were growing up? Because I I read that you didn't make the acapella group. Is that I didn't. right? I didn't make. You're like the Michael Jordan of music. Man. I d- <laughs> Like, <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't make the acapella. The group college acapella in group. Yep, they're called the Crosby's. Uh, I mean, whatever. Uh, they were. Yeah, dude, my voice wasn't good enough at the time. Uh, it's okay. I think yeah. that that stuff, like you know, we were talking about with your wrist. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good to have have stuff not go well for you in the beginning and push and, and freak out and fight fight through it. Were you singing better. a lot as a kid, like growing up? I think well, my dad is um, a producer, right? He's a, he's a children's singer. Okay. And he's children's singer. Children's singer. Like one of the best. His name's Red Grammar. He's amazing. Uh-huh. Uh I tell people I almost don't want you to go listen to his stuff cuz then you'll realize I just rip I just ripped him. <laughs> you know, he, sure. I got so much from him and growing up my mom was a songwriter as well. Wow. I grew up in a house where they were writing music all the time. Mm. And uh you know, it was really kind of a cool to have your mentor be someone who just goes after what they what they feel they're here to do, mm-hmm. even if it's not amazingly cool or, or whatever, you know, my dad, like it's, he, he first spent a bunch of time trying to be a solo artist in, in like pop music. Yes. And then he, he came to terms with the fact that like, <clears throat> I'm, I'm here to be a kid singer. Wow. And what I'm does that ama- mean to be a kid singer? And I'm amazing at it. What does that even mean? That means that like, if What's you ever went to like one of my dad's shows, tons of people and parents <clears throat> bring, um, four to like nine year olds. Uh, and, and sometimes like it varies and, and he, he's able to teach them like, uh, values and morals without them knowing it. Huh. They're just, it's the best. It's like the Sesame street of music. Sesame street. Yeah. Yeah. He was like in the Raffi era. He was nominated for a Grammy. Wow. Um, and watching him do that was really kind of cool. It's, you don't even know like what's soaking in about it. I listened Mm. to, I just listened to one of his songs recently on Spotify and I was like, yeah, 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 I'm just ripping all this. Like, I'm right. just, you know, I just got this all from my dad. It's wonderful. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Now, who was more influential for you, mom or dad, growing mm, up? My my mom is like a spiritual titan, and she's like no bullshit, uh, pretty harsh, uh, but grounded and really yeah. loving. Yeah. And my dad is, I'm very much like my dad, which is like a... Uh, just really happy and like very like worried all the time to make sure everybody's having a good time. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like I, there's a couple other people in here and I'm just like, are you guys good? Is everybody good? <laughs> yeah. Like legit, my, brain, my brain goes like, goes like that. So to have both of those is, it was really mm. cool growing up. Uh, just cause she's, and I find that I pull people into my life, like my mom that, that are kind of harsh. 
to keep to make sure that I don't gloss over to right. any important stuff. Like your manager, like no. my manager. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. I keep people around that like are willing to go at me. Yeah, because I know that's like something I need to work on. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. what's the most important lesson they both taught you? Um, my mom was just fearless about her uh her purpose on earth right she was just like it didn't necessarily align with the culture and she didn't care she was just like she would she held all these incredible women's gatherings at our house mm. uh to bring all the women in the, in the community over to let them know how special they were like that's amazing that's the really more that cool. i like think back and you know growing up you're just like oh yeah that's what my mom does and everybody would go like your mom's incredible and I was like, yeah, that's what it's moms normal. are. That's yeah. what moms are, right? <laughs> yeah. And so the, and she, when she passed away, mm. um, you know, I just had my birthday party and it's, I have plenty of things. I didn't, I didn't want to have anybody bring anything to me. I was like, please bring uh, a story about my mom. Wow. And so there was like 50 of my closest friends. <laughs> and we just straight up ugly cried through like three hours of this like amazing stories of what my mom had, had done for other people in their lives. Mm. And so there's a depth that I get from her that I think is super important. And then my dad is uh, just the best to be around and he's amazing and sweet. And he's this like, he's this vessel for, for kids that's like, uh, let, like come here, let, like, let's sing, let's have a good time. Let me teach you about a couple, uh, some things. So that's where I think I'm, uh, I got both sides. Mm. And uh, so I, I naturally lean uh, light and sweet. But I'm, I get bored quickly unless we're talking about some shit. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. What's the thing you love to talk about the most? You know, right now, my the, this next album is a lot about um, just a lot about like pain. Mm. Kind of like what we're talking about. Like it, that's such a fascinating law of the universe mm-hmm. is how do you deal with, uh, with struggle and with difficulties and with pain and, and – uh, the more that you go through stuff and then you see how much you grew from it, how, how does your relationship with it stand? You like, are you wishing for it to come now? Because so many of the things that have happened in my life that have been incredible occurred because I went through such terrible stuff. So yeah, I, I'm fascinated by that. The relationship of, of difficulties and pain mm. and then uh, success. <clears throat> Do you feel like you want to be able to be as successful as you are without the pain you've gone through? A hundred percent. I think that, um, you know, it was like really important that I went through a, a tragedy I don't wish I don't like I I miss my mother like fiercely and I do not wish her that she left me but I also know that as someone that loves to talk about um the bright colors in this world you don't want to hear that from someone yeah unless they've gone through some stuff and and I didn't have compassion in a way like I I things just kind of like came easy I was like you know played sports well enough so that nobody picked on me right it was like homecoming king like without trying too hard just yeah. like kind of like went through like was fairly agreeable around people had like a good time and so then you see the person like the girl like dressed in goth or and you're like and you can tell she's like really upset and you're like and so i would go up and try and just be like you should just be happier <laughs> right which is obnoxious <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like zero compassion zero understanding you, you you're like a privileged white kid mm-hmm. saying like just like just do it, yeah. um, and so when when I got really like knocked in the gut and my mom passed away and I you know had days walking around Los Angeles with tears in my eyes, uh, just like confused. I'm like, oh man, maybe the chick at Target who's checking me out that's throwing shade like is going through some stuff. That yeah. was really important uh, for my growth as like a human. Yeah, was to go. Wow, okay, everybody. Everybody can can and probably does feel like this at some point. Mm-hmm. You know. Do you feel like you'd be as successful as you are now with? I think you have that? to get that somehow, and I don't. So really? sure, if my mom didn't pass away and she was still here, I'm sure I would have gotten kicked in the balls some, some other, other some other way. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. What's the biggest thing you got to overcome adversity wise last year? Because hmm. it's really your biggest year so far, right? Like yeah. everything's kind of taken off. Man. You're hitting all these platinums. You're doing this. You're touring with everyone. You're what do, what do I, like people in Cincinnati are screaming your name like yes man, Andy. I think uh <laughs> my my issue is is like along with being relentless I think as soon as you get into your 30s you realize like relentless is cool 
Uh, but it's not just a it's not just like a one button you can hit. You can just be like, all right, cool, let's just be relentless because um, you know, I, I like collapsed on my vacation wow. because I had just been going and not sleeping. Yeah. So that you know, I think that's one of the, like the biggest word you find in with people like in their early thirties, I think is like, ah, balance is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Where's balance come in? <laughs> right. Uh, especially I... people that are like, like s- successful to some degree. Mm-hmm. They start to go like, oh man, I'm going to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I might, I, I might you. die if I keep going this route. Something shifts when you hit 30. I'm 33 as well. Yeah. I'm 33, yeah. 33. Same age. And I remember hitting 30. I was like, man, twenties. I just like was relentless in my just own go. way. Yeah. Just no sleep. Yeah. 3 a.m., go to bed, like wake up early, just go all day to try to like make it or make something, yes. right? And I remember hitting 30 being like, I need to consider what I'm doing with every area of my life. Yeah. In terms of the foods I'm eating, in terms of how I'm sleeping, in terms of like the conversations, the relationships, everything needs to be evaluated. And it's, it's much more, um, I think that's growth yeah. rather than like being weak, mm-hmm. which is still a really hard thing to, you can say those words, mm-hmm. but especially growing up like a sports kid, and uh, varsity basketball and like never give up get back up get back yeah. up get in there <laughs> like that there's a lot of voices like that that, yes, uh, that make it difficult to actually go okay cool i'm gonna take four hours and read a book yeah just in you know because i have this time right now i think that in in an entertainment career it's really unfortunate that a lot of times um uh, when i'm working is when everybody else is off so then it's it's hard for people that are really motivated sometimes to take a break even on a Sunday and be like, okay, so hard, let's man. chill. It's triple hard in my opinion to do it on a Tuesday. No. It, you know happen. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. So I worked, uh, you know, the, my schedule is like, all right, you're going to go do five gigs that start on Thursday because that's when the party starts. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then you go Monday and then you do some other like, now you got to write songs. On if, Tuesday yeah, if, morning, and yeah. then Tuesday and then Wednesday is your day off. But you gotta prep for management Thursday. is still like t- going strong. <laughs> yeah. Agents got stuff going on. All your friends, a lot of times, are like are like doing their thing, and you just feel like it's really difficult to chill out on a Wednesday when yeah. you know that that's what you still need. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that was probably one of my hardest things to to like try and tackle because I literally fainted from uh like I like it was scared the crap out of my wife. I was like in the shower and we we went on vacation to Ireland, and that was like. I had just been on like a marathon run of of uh, just being kind of hot in the industry. So mm-hmm. everybody calls and I'm being so excited like, oh, yeah, all that. Let's do all, every yes. single thing. Right. So I'll, I'll take the red eye mm-hmm. and then do that and do that. Do and the do that, morning that. show. Do the, the morning show and then night. we'll do it at night yeah. and then we'll, you know, <laughs> and, and just like didn't sleep for a year. Yeah. And just like my body was like, all right, n- no. And you so collapsed in the shower. I collapsed in the shower, scared the crap out of my wife. Um, and then so the next year was like really about working on. You know, how do we not die? How do we not, do we not die? <laughs> how do we go after our dreams yeah. without dying? So how do you do that now? Are you scheduling um, like breaks in the day? Or are you? I think that, I yeah, it's, it's a lot about kind of understanding yourself and putting priorities on, on things. Mm-hmm. And so going like, yeah, I also just like love, I'm just like excited. I don't want to miss things. Mm-hmm. So I don't, you know, I don't want to miss out on if all the friends want to go see a movie and I'm home, but I need to sleep. I'll, I'm like. Up until last year, it was always like, yeah, just go. Just, yeah. dude, this is awesome. Life is good. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So placing a premium on this idea that rest and uh, and and downtime is important and you're not being weak, it's actually going to make you better. Mm-hmm. It's still something that I like hear and go, mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm trying yeah. to take that in and yeah. believe that. Because um, well, now you're really, you're, you're, career is really kind of going like this and so it's like you want to make sure you're taking all the opportunities yeah and, and, I, sure. and you don't want to miss the whole point of of this yeah. you know like achievement is only so much of it you know yeah it's true yeah man what are the what do you feel like you gained or because you didn't kind of make it in the music industry do you feel like early on do yeah. you feel like you gained a lot from kind of the different pressures of the industry or the different uh the bs that goes on in the industry since you kind of like are doing it on your own terms man it sounds I, can't, like... I cannot imagine how hard it would be for your ego i say this so sincerely if you were if you were if you made it and you were on the cover of magazines at like 16 mm. that would be so hard mm-hmm. to handle because so much of that is awesome and cool and so much of it is like hilarious and not what what has to do like it's so 
not important. Mm. Um, but if it gets wrapped up in who you are and that's what your thing is, is to be the guy that's on the magazine. Like one of the things uh, on the street is you realize that you're you're the you're the coolest thing for like 20 minutes. Usually that's when you make all your money. So you go out on the street for eight hours <laughs> and you'll play and play and play and play and play. Wow. And the only way that you actually get a big crowd is when you get enough people surrounding you that the person walking by can't see in. And, and that's like, what draws somebody in. Those street performers are so good They're amazing at, at it. They They'll like, like literally a, take you and science. put you in a, in a semicircle. Come here. Yeah. Come, come closer. Here. No, can you come in closer, yes. please? And to then the they'll line. Like, we have to. Yeah. Oh, we'll get and arrested. then they'll like start yelling at you, make yes. you seen. You're like, ah, oh, oh. ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll come in. Come and come then they've got like comedy and all yeah, these other yeah, yeah, things yeah. involved. They're really, really good at it. They're brilliant. And so what you find is that you can be out there for eight hours and actually you're waiting for the moment of magic to happen. And when that moment happens... Now there's 50 people that can't see. And now, so now there's a lot of people and then you stop and then everybody buys the CD at that moment. Very rarely do you make a bunch of money because throughout the day, someone comes up and gives you a, uh, yeah. and like slow, it's, like, it's not like a trickle. No. It's like it all hits at once. Wow. Um, and then, and then they're all gone. So, so you're like, recreate it again. So yeah, you're like loser, 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 loser. <laughs> awesome. Loser, 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 loser. That's how the day goes. Yeah. And so you kind of get used to that. And, and so I think that the, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the pattern. Mm -hmm. And so when that happens at these higher levels, you go, yeah, 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 that's like the, that's the rhythm. That's what happens. That's how this goes. How did you feel or how did you handle failure? I guess if it was like constant failure every single day, Mm -hmm. every hour failure, except for like one 10 minute spot where you didn't fail. Yeah. How do you continue to bring yourself back day after day, year after year, knowing you're failing constantly every single day and that you're. mm -hmm. I, I like to think that you get. I I feel very uncomfortable now if I'm not failing in some way. You know, it's like um, I make this analogy only because I'm not like the best gym guy. You seem like you are. I try. No, my little... girlfriend like is a machine. She's a gym. machine. She's you a go machine. every day? Five days a week. Five yeah. days a week. Oh, yeah, yeah you try. Uh, I try, yeah. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't feel comfortable saying that I'm uh, an exercise freak. Uh-huh. But I have worked out with people. One of my good, one of my best friends is this guy named Justin Baldoni. He's on like Jane the Virgin. He's like a great actor, obnoxiously good looking. And we go to the, sometimes like I tried to go to the gym with him and his level of workout was just like, this is, I don't want to hang out. You're insane. <laughs> this is crazy. Right. What you think, what you're comfortable doing and the, and like the headset that you're mm-hmm. in is like the level of pain uh, or struggle that you're comfortable with here is so much more than I am in this area. It's mm-hmm. amazing. And I would hope to think where I do feel confident is like failing, uh, creating a show, failing writing music, failing uh, in these areas, I would I would put myself up against anybody in that way. Mm-hmm. Right. So like I'll write 101 songs and fail the whole time with a smile and figure out how to keep getting back up. So and I could because I know and the same way that he knows when his bicep is hurting like hell, he gets accustomed to like that's that's what this is. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel comfortable. And I can tell you that he was doing a workout where he didn't feel that. He'd be like, well, let's go harder because mm-hmm. I don't – unless that's that's happening or that feeling of pain is occurring, then I'm probably not growing. And so failure be- in the beginning is hard t- to take and then – now if I go two months without like a, like a big kick to my ego to something like that, I'm like, man, I'm probably not pushing in the way that I should be pushing. So those things start mm. to become your friends in a strange, strange way. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, man. What was Weird. the um- – was there ever a time you lose your audience? Yeah. Where you're performing now. There's thousands of people there and you feel like, uh, oh, I'm 30 minutes into this set and I've lost the audience. Yeah. And if so, how do you reconnect to bring the entire audience? So to this the is move? something that my band absolutely despises about me is I like to <laughs> I'm very I don't care what the set list is. I'm always like, how do we do this together? How do we create an event? How do we create a feeling by the end of this that we're all doing it together? So I'm I'm much I see it much more like uh you know how a catcher like calls the pitches for the pitcher. Yes. <laughs> and so we'll have we have a set list and sometimes there's even like break, like musical breaks that are all planned out, but I will just like cut that shit if it's not working. Mm. If you're in a zone where like cuz uh if the crowd is skewing like a little bit older for some weird reason that night or if it's like way younger or if it's or I don't know if it's raining outside it needs to be addressed. Do mm. I need to like jump out in the crowd? We all need to like get like yeah, I, 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 that is, I think, to varying degrees what happens every night. 
is you're you have everybody at a fever pitch and then something happens where you like lose them a little bit and then mm. you like okay that goes back to my thing of uh while i'm singing sometimes like listening yeah and trying to make this a dance oh, gosh that's powerful man. yeah like how do, how do we do this in a way i'm here for you i'm here to try to make some amazing stuff happen and if it mm. happens for you then i'm then i'm the happiest that i've ever been mm. yeah. it's really i mean you're more of a jazz player than anything then by to some degree, to, be able to play off and on with the to crowd play off, and the band and hearing and trying to figure out how to make every how to make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. My brother, he's the number one jazz violinist in the world. Hell yeah! He played with Les Paul for ten years. Awesome. Played at his funeral. Yeah. He's been all over the world. And I would grow up watching him essentially, you know, do what you did, but for like 10, 20 people at these little jazz bars or like yeah. dive bars in Ohio or restaurants. He'd play at restaurants every Sunday to make money and all these different things. And I would see him just be ruthless in his ask for people after he'd play he would just put his cd in people's hands love it and just be like will you buy my cd to each person in the room <laughs> dude he was relentless it's so funny because and he was just like sh- he didn't care if he was people my like, wife oh, i respect the hell out of that <laughs> my wife always laughs at me because when people are coming at you to sell you something yeah a lot of times it's horrifically annoying yes but i respect it so I'm always like a little bit, I, I never say, I never am rude to anybody. Mm-hmm. For like walking through New York City to go to something and it's like, yo, you like music? <laughs> Check my album, bro. <laughs> and like, how do I answer that question? Uh, no, I don't, I don't want anything, <laughs> but I always go like, but I, I like, keep, I respect keep you. Hustling, like, yeah. please keep going. I'm not your guy today, but like, do not stop. Because right. I really do genuinely respect that. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny when you say one more thing about failure, like being, you start to seek out, like I had this show at the Grove. Mm-hmm. it's so cool when they do that i don't know if you've ever yes. been to one of those oh, yes they it's put great. the stage there it's amazing it's like a free concert so everybody when was comes. this maybe i saw you there sometime this was probably like two and a half years ago it's and the uh, best, man it's just packed it's down packed there. and we're we play our first song we go into the second song and the guy the cameraman kicks off the power accidentally someone down below and now literally nothing's coming there's no sound and i can't hear the guitar and yeah. but when you've had enough things go wrong in your life and you see them as opportunities um rather than be like ah i was wait for everybody to <laughs> come back right your brain goes into like man this could this could be the thing this is like this is this is now the moment mm. uh so i stood up on my chair a cappella and was like everybody i have a song exactly for this it's called keep your head up we're all going to sing it together like a cappella and then like Thousands of people in the grove all together, like, of course, laughed, excited. I'm standing alone on a stool, on my stool that I brought out into, the, like, right in front of the crowd. And we sang uh, an a cappella version of Keep Your Head Up Together. But, and, then, and then by the time we were done, we had more stuff, more power. It came out of and your you life. And you start, that happens enough times in your life to where you could, when things come at you that are, seem terrible, you go, like, wait, wait, is this the, is this like the thing? Mm. Is this like the special moment that everybody's going to remember? And I get that's like probably one of the most talked about things that my fans say. Like, man, do you remember that time? <laughs> that like, all oh, the power went out. It was so dope. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's like kind of a metaphor for like how to how to think, how to try and be. And I'm, I mm-hmm. clearly am not that way always. There's mm. plenty of times oh, where I'm sure. like, You're this like, is the worst. Uh, put the power back yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> you just put the power back on, please. <laughs> I'm not feeling it today. I'm not feeling especially like inspiring today. Right. But man, yeah. that's cool. What's the thing that – you're most proud of that most people don't know about you? Mm, what am I most proud of? It's a really interesting question. I would say um, people probably know it about no, it's so funny like social media like everybody knows. Mm. Uh, I don't know maybe Maybe just the level of, um, I don't know, I, t- I take a, like a lot of pride in, in how how much time I put into uh, spirituality and like really trying to have that be a guiding light. Uh, I think people probably do know that about me, mm-hmm. but, and that, it's weird to say I'm proud of myself for that, but that is what I, I really like ex- excites me. I think that we... We have influences. We feel very comfortable saying that we have influences in other ways. People ask me like, "Oh, you, uh, 
like who your influence is on this album. It's very easy. You go like, oh, cool. Well, I was listening to Billy Joel a lot. Mm-hmm. Love a lot of John Mayer. Lauren Hill's freaking awesome. Gosh, Lauren Hill's amazing. Yeah, but like we don't ask a ton of times. Like, who, who's who's the influence on your life? Mm. Who, who who are your like influences uh, that about being a good person? You know, yeah. and and I've I've really enjoy that that process of like you know I just recently just read a book about Mother Teresa and was just like blown away. Right. Been getting into Gandhi a little bit, mm-hmm. like spending some time with like a Martin Luther King speech just like trying as much as possible to put energy into just into just that just like how do you actually who are who are your influences on a daily basis that have nothing to do with like achievement but about like making your soul a little bit better Mm, that's cool is that a weird thing to be proud of no i think it's awesome okay just checking i think i'd rather be a a great human being and be known for that as, as opposed to someone who wrote books and did all these other things sure and hit achievements but someone who was a good human being yeah you which know. is which is not just gonna happen. No, no. This <laughs> is like, oh, cool. Well, you're just you're just a great human. Yeah. Good job. You didn't do anything for it. Exactly. It's like, man, yeah. Well, there's a lot of energy and time and thought that yeah. hopefully goes into gaining tools on how to hopefully be a better person, mm-hmm. or just putting a lot of energy and time into that. Yeah. 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 That's great, man. A few final questions yes, for you. Yes. Yes. Um, if your mom was still here, and you had another chance to sing her one song. What would the song be, and what would you want her to feel? Mm. So my mom was, you know, the first the, the time I played her my first song, I was like fifteen. Again, she was the heart. She was the grounded, harsh side, which I needed so desperately. And she wasn't like, "Oh my God, it's amazing." <laughs> she was like, her answer was, uh, she I played it for her, and she goes like. There's a lot going on in there. Hmm. It's like a lot of chords, and there's uh, a lot. Like she had a lot of like comments, feedback. like directly, a lot of feedback. <laughs> yeah, which I wasn't necessarily like ready for. I was coming to like to my mom, like, hey, Give me a hug. what yeah. do you think about this? And she's like, well, you know, this is what you want. If you want to like actually write a song, like, yeah, let me give you some feedback. So probably, um, I also, I also don't know that she doesn't like hasn't played a part in a lot of it. Mm-hmm. I, I think that we don't understand inspiration. Any artist will tell you that some of the best stuff they like just came out of them. Where did that come from? It's, su- it's super interesting to have, uh, I don't know what anybody's spiritual beliefs are, but when you have a mom that passes away, I feel like I have somebody looking out for me wherever the hell she's at. And I don't, I, I honestly cannot say that she hasn't like helped with some, yeah, I, I guarantee she probably has. Um, so that's actually the sweetest answer I can think of is like, I'd play her and she'd be like, yeah, I did that, <laughs> you know, sure. like that's really sweet. And, and we, you know, we really don't know, like, like when a, when a director has this crazy idea to do a movie, is that, is that him? Or a lot of times when you hear the best artists, they go like, yeah, I was a channel. I was like, I felt like I've had, I've had songs just fall out. Mm-hmm. Some of my favorite ones. And you go like, where the hell did that come from? I, I, it's like the most exhilarating feeling ever to have something just fall out and those don't happen a ton most mm-hmm. of the time you're like slaving away to get something yeah. to feel reasonably cool but uh yeah I, I guess i would probably play her i'm really proud of honey i'm good as well mm-hmm. uh sonically it's like one of the weirdest ones i've ever done uh and also just that you could that you could talk about something like that and have yeah. It go big. yeah that's cool man mm-hmm. wow okay um this is a question I call the three truths. Three truths. Three truths. Okay. So this is, um, imagine it's your last day here many years from now. You've achieved everything you want to achieve. Okay. You've written however many songs you want to write. You've had so many number ones. You've performed everywhere. Everyone in the world has heard at least one of your songs before. Yeah. And it's the last day. Yeah. And for whatever reason, all your stuff is erased. All the stuff you put out there is gone. Mm-hmm. And someone comes up to you and says, well, all we have is this piece of paper for you to write down the three things you know to be true about everything you've ever said or sung or experienced in your life. What would be the three things you know to be true, the lessons that you would pass on Mm. that we would remember you by? Okay, three truths would be we're only here to serve each other. Uh, That your pain is actually your friend. And, uh, and just like, 
and love. That's it. <laughs> you yeah. don't even need to like, there's no direction for that. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just love. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to take a moment to acknowledge you, Andy. I'm, I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm so grateful that you're, you were resilient for those, that many years mm. on the streets and that even though it probably wasn't the most um, where you wanted to be, I know it was affecting people day in and day out, even if they didn't stop, but they were moved mm. by your voice. And I acknowledge you now for your incredible gift to move audiences, whether they're listening in person, whether they're listening on the radio or Spotify, wherever they're listening. You're bringing so much joy and positivity to the world with your message, with your creativity, and with your positivity. So I want to acknowledge you for ah, this I appreciate gift. you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so, yes. so much. Um, we have one final question. Okay. But I want to talk about uh, your latest single, your big song right now. Yeah. And what, what is it? Why is it so important to you? Yeah. So um, it's this really sweet love song that I wrote to my wife. Um, I've been married to her for four years. Mm. And so that's not like in, in, uh, in the scope. That's not that long. Yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's long enough to where when she does something that genuinely surprises me about her, mm. that becomes one of the sweet moments. Yeah. You know, where something, she does something like, I do, I know, I, I, maybe I don't know you, <laughs> but we've been together for a really long time, but maybe I don't know you. Cause mm -hmm. that's amazing. Um, so I wrote, you know, Fre it's called fresh eyes. And so when we went to go make the video, um, having been on the street, uh, as a performer, there's so many homeless people out there yeah. all the time. And so we decided to make a video where we went down to Skid Row, which I can actually see mm -hmm. from your, uh, from where we are right now. And uh, we gave makeovers to, to homeless people. That's really cool. And it was so, so powerful and sweet. This, this group of, this population that uh, we all have our own interaction with on a daily basis. We all see them. And a lot of times I'm guilty of it as well. You just go, I don't know where to put that in my brain. Mm-hmm. That level of suffering, I can't really comprehend, and I and I don't like that I'm not doing anything about it, or that as a cu culture we haven't figured it out. So I'm just gonna not think about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> in general, that never works uh, in yeah. any form of your personal life yeah. or whatever. <laughs> exactly. So um, I hope that I didn't annoy everyone and shove it in their face, <laughs> but it was something very personal to me because I'd been around it a lot. Yeah. And so we went down and we gave. Uh, these women dresses and we had hairstylists come in and do their hair and, cool. and makeup and we didn't change the world but in that day I can tell you like there was about 40 people that were mm. that were sincerely affected and there was a double mirror so you can see when they turn around and see themselves the dignity that comes back into wow. their into kind of into their being the feeling of like yeah you know what I do look pretty damn good uh, and, and I am capable and I am you know mm. and so that was uh such a powerful, powerful day. And what it's like such a sweet thing to add to this song. Um, it's like a love song that right. is, that is now sh has a couple different meanings. That's cool. Yeah. That's the challenge. I mean, for me, I, I was just in India a couple months ago and I see a lot of homeless people everywhere I travel to to third world countries. Yeah. And it's just like sometimes it feels like, what's the solution? What's what, the how, solution? There's so many homeless people, I but, think, let alone on the street and third street promenade, but like everywhere in the world. Yeah. And, and I, and I think that, uh, I definitely do not have an answer for yeah. it. I do know that when you talk about like something like climate change mm. or these huge problems that just make you want to give up, <laughs> um, just start small and do something. Yeah. And, and, and you start to slowly, like if there's a homeless person on the street, a lot of times if you, uh, speak with them, that's a lot of what they want. Mm -hmm. I noticed in my interactions throughout the day, the dignity was probably the most important thing. Right. Right. Yeah. So sure, they, they're like, cool, this jacket's cool. But what it is is like, you're paying attention to me and I have a purpose mm -hmm. and I'm here and, and, and I have a job. That's what they kept saying is like, tomorrow I'm sad because you're going to leave and it's going to be back to like, I, there's not a lot for me to do. Right. It wasn't like, you, I'm, and I'm not going to have things anymore. It was like, um, I'm not like, I love that I'm the star of your video. Mm -hmm. I, I would tell these, uh, their name is Loretta and then, uh, Paul. And I'm like, you guys are going to be the star of a music video. Like a, mil a millions, millions of people are going to see this. Right. So you need to like, do get ready, get yeah. ready. Let's do this. <laughs> and they were so psyched that's and, cool. and it was just so sweet to watch them. And, and that's not that hard. Mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't have to be a huge music video. Yeah. It can be just stopping in saying hi to somebody or, or, or seeing them differently. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. That's what I took away from that experience. Was, that's cool. Is, uh, 
what they – not they. I don't even like to say they. But what someone – what a human – I can tell you what a human doesn't want is to be categorized as homeless. It's like my name's Paul, mm-hmm. right? I'm so a human being. I'm a human being, and you just say, like, you're homeless, so go over there. Mm-hmm. And what what I can – what I know – is that they don't they don't want that. Yeah. 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 Um, where can we hang out with you the most online? Where do you want people to follow you and connect with you and Yeah, I mean I'm uh I, right now I'm pri- probably mostly on uh Facebook and Instagram mm-hmm. and I'm still coming on to Snapchat. I just got these super cool. Have you seen Snapchat glasses? I have seen them. I haven't used them yet though. I just got a pair so you can ch- look out for me They'll be like well. snapping constantly. Just like, like ah! <laughs> And what are, are they all your name everywhere? Yes, yeah, so it's just Andy Grammer, G R A M M E R, and then Snapchat's Andy Grammer One. I don't know who got there first. <laughs> so annoying. darn it. Okay, darn it. so yeah. follow you on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram yeah. at Andy Grammer. At Andy Grammer. Yeah. Um, and your website as well, correct? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool. And that's just AndyGrammer.com, right? AndyGrammer.com. Awesome. All right. The final question. Final question is: What is your definition of greatness? My definition of greatness is when you um, when you don't let it, – it has everything to do with potential, like realizing your potential and not, not letting fear dictate your ship. So greatness is like is, – is being willing to stand up for the voice in your – the, the, the quiet voice that we don't listen to enough and going after that and then, uh, you know, staying with it while fear is trying to throw you off your course the whole time. And, and, and if, if at the end of a life you have done that consistently, I mean, I just doubt you're not great. Mm. That's, my, that's what I think. Yeah. That's it. I love it, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate everything you've created and the story you have so far and everything you're about to create yeah. moving forward. So thanks thank so much, you. Andy, for coming on. Oh, man. Appreciate awesome. you having me. Yeah, thank you.